That's brilliant. So right. do you remember what year it was that you guys met? Yeah. 1948. And was it the summer it was or the winter? Summer 48. That's when I had just graduated Fairfax. And we went to this BBG meeting, AZA, and there were the boys and the girls. And we got together after the meeting and I had a lot of the boys came over to me to talk. And swarmed. They were swarmed around me. <laughs> and there was one fella standing on the sidelines and he did not come over to me. And I thought, there's something wrong. Why doesn't he come over? And all the other fellas came over. So I excused myself and I went over to talk to him. I said, why didn't you come over? He says, well, I didn't think I had a chance because you had so many fellows around you. So I says, no, I says, I'm interested in you. And he says, okay, how about going for cheesecake and coffee? Or go for cheesecake at the Sportsman's Lodge. I says, I'd love it. I says, but I have my girlfriend. So I said, we have to have somebody a boyfriend for my girlfriend. He says, okay, we'll get someone. So he got this fellow Buzz, and we had Buzz, Buzz and, and Roz. Roz. Buzz and Roz and Buzz. Buzz and Roz, and Those we are asked them here very often. Yeah, if they wanted to go and have cheesecake at the Sportsman's Lodge, they said yes. So we walked over to Mort's car, and there was that gorgeous black convertible that I loved, and it was love ever after. And what was he wearing From again? the first day, he was wearing a wine shirt that had the zipper at the top. It's amazing what I remember. Mm -hmm. It's a zipper on the top and it zipped sideways all the way down. And he had his hair, gorgeous hair, and his gorgeous blue eyes. And we had a wonderful time at the Sportsman's Lodge having talked. cheesecake. And he talked, and he was darling. And, and where did he, what's his background? Where did he grow up? His background, he came from New York, and I didn't know who his mother and father were until this, he had called me after he dropped us off. The next day, he called me. Oh, he asked you for your number. And yeah, he did ask for my number. I gave him my telephone number. He called me when I got home, and he says, I'd like to take you out. I'd like to take you to the... Um, Clyde the Circus. Clyde Beatty, that's right, Clyde, Clyde Beatty Circus. I says, I'd love it. So he says, okay, let's go Saturday night, and I'll come pick you up certain so and so time. And he came, and I remember the dress I was wearing, which what is so wear? funny, wow. a powder blue dress that Grandma made me. It had a round neck, and it had sleeves, and it was fitted here, and it had a little flared skirt, and it was in powder blue. And then, I, I guess How I looked you pretty cute. Then? Down, with the wave on the side, down. I think it was blonde. I think my hair was sort of blonde. Kind of Marilyn Monroe-ish. Yeah. yeah, and I then think. he says he met Grandma and Grandpa, because he came in and I introduced him to Grandma and Grandpa. He was very a gentleman. And then we went out to the car, and there, in the back seat was his mother and father, oh, how funny. Babe and Shemp. And I did not know who his father was until that night. And I saw Shemp, and I said, ah, oh, I remembered who he was from the Three Stooges. So they were darling to me, they were so sweet. And I was very excited the whole evening. We got to the Clyde Beatty Circus, and there, standing right by the entrance, was Clyde Beatty. And we walked in, and Clyde Beatty took his arms and wrapped him around Shemp, and they kissed each other and hugged each other, and like old buddies. And he says, come on, Shemp, I've got your seat for you. And he took us into the circus, took him right down in front, and we had a box, and they brought over champagne, a bucket of champagne. Were you 21 yet? No, I was only 18. <laughs> but they had it. Uh, we were celebrities, right. and this was my first uh, seeing how celebrities acted mm -hmm. because all these people were coming over to our box 
and asking Shen for his autograph. Would you like some coffee? Uh, coffee. Do you want some cheese and crackers? Oh, no, no. I'll okay. But anyways. <laughs> Because <laughs> Sandy was having no, cheese and crackers. No, it's going to open up for make any noise. So, anyways, um, so they all were coming over, and I said to Shemp, gee, doesn't it bother you that so many people are asking you for your autograph? And he says, the minute they stop asking me for my autograph, then I'll start worrying. He says, he loves signing autographs. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so yeah. wonderful that he said that. Cool. And then my life ever after was just so wonderful. Uh, they, my in-laws, we got married and they were marvelous and they loved me and my life was one happy merry-go-round. He was smart, he opened up his, uh, the first Serve Yourself station. They never had Serve Yourself before. So I met him in 48 and in 50 he opened up the Serve Yourself station on Hollywood Way in Alameda, 18 pumps, big station. And they had Debbie Reynolds come, and she was opening, they had the pictures of her in the newspaper, pumping her own gas so at the See How to Save. That was the name of the gasoline station, See How to Save. Oh, I never knew that. Reynolds. Yeah, and he never wanted it. to go into show business? He wouldn't go into show business because he had show people all the time. All his life he had show people over. Billy Gilbert used to come over all the time. Yeah, I want to know who. Milton Burrow, Buddy oh. Hackett. Uh, Martha Ray was his godmother. She loved him, Martha Ray. I didn't know that. Yeah. I see, this is uh, going. And, gosh, there were so many. Phil Silvers. We used to come over all the time. Um, you know, the house is not a home. Mm -hmm. The madam. Who? Oh. Polly Adler. She was a big madam in New York. She was a friend of grandma's. And she used to come over and Papa Shemp was so mad because he didn't like the idea of her coming over wow. to the house. Well, she was a madam in New York and he didn't like that idea too much. But yet, Bugsy Siegel used to come over yeah. in his gangster. big black cap. He was a gambler. I've never yeah. heard any of that. Yeah. Vegas, Bugsy so. Siegel had a big black Cadillac and he used to come over and visit Shemp. Yeah. Wow. Anybody from the neighborhood? Uh, everybody knew him. Everybody was always saying, hi Shemp, hi Shemp. But it was show people that used to come over all the time. And Grandma used to cook. All the time, she was always cooking because oh, wow. Shemp and Babe, both of them didn't like driving. Mm -hmm. So their friends would come and pick them up all the time and take them places. And her house was like an open house. She loved to cook and entertain. Mm -hmm. So she had the entertainer's house. And then they used to come pick up Jill and take her to the races because Babe, Grandma was a big better. Anyways, going back a little bit, we dated for two years because I was 18 and dated for two years and then when I was 20 we got married. Wait, tell us about the engagement. The engagement gave me my ring and I couldn't stop looking at it. We were in the car at night and he brought me home. We had been somewhere to a movie or something and then he slipped the ring on my finger and he says, will you marry me or something like that. Oh, I couldn't. I was shocked. And we were lighting <laughs> the flashlights so I could see the ring. And then when I showed Babe and Shemp, Grandma Babe said, Ah, oh, he gave it was a gorgeous emerald cut, carrot and a half. I remember it. And Grandma says, I'm so unhappy that he gave you that ring. He should have given you a bigger ring. But he never wanted to ask us for money to buy the ring. So he <coughs> sold his set of trains. When he was a little boy, he took the trains, sold his set of trains to buy me my ring. Because he wanted to do it himself. He didn't want to take any money from his parents. But when he opened up the gasoline station, he did borrow $50,000 from Shemp. And Were they close? A very, yeah. And uh, Ben Season, his partner... Where did he meet Ben? He met Ben Season when he got out of the service. He was in the Coast Guard. 
they went to work for Judge Brand, who was a friend of theirs. And Judge Brand said, I will give Mort a job when he gets out of the service. So he was selling cars. And he didn't like selling cars. So that's when he met Ben Season, and the two of them decided to open up the gasoline station. So they borrowed the 50000 and they told Shemp they would pay it back in one year. And in one year, they paid back the full $50,000. Wow.